now, now, let me ask you this. Now, in 1992, you played the character Harv in Frank Oz's House Sitter with Goldie Hawn and Steve Martin. Talk about a film with star power. And Frank Oz, what was that experience like? And what was it like literally being directed by Yoda himself? That technically makes you Jedi. Right, that's a horrible Star Wars. Yeah, movie. that was a yeah. I, I, that's I like only it. what I can't do. I can do everybody except Yoda. Yeah, give me yeah, an yeah. effing break, man. Yeah, don't try that. Yeah. <laughs> Nino, try. I'm getting better. See now. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow, you're bringing back great memories, though. And uh, Frank Oz is a super, super cool guy. Like, like very cool and very, 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 very nice. Um, that movie, a weird thing happened. I auditioned for a completely different part. I auditioned for the part of the um, the, the therapist, the counselor that um, counsels uh, Goldie Hawn and Steve Martin. Frank Oz cast me, and so then he called. Then they called me a couple of days later, and they said, "Oh my God, there's been a mistake um, because Frank cast you." through the the Boston casting director, but in New York, they'd already cast Christopher Durang to play um, the the marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. So Frank feels terrible. So they've created another part for you, uh, the hardware store clerk, and they're inviting you to be the rehearsal reader, which meant that me and this fabulous actor who, who I just, think is incredible, uh, Cherry Jones, um, the two of us got hired not only to do our small parts in the movie, but to be there for two, for like a week or so of rehearsals. And oh my God, I've never been so re nervous for a rehearsal in my life because it was Steve Martin, Goldie Hawn, all that. And they were a friggin' blast, man. Uh, the two of them together, Steve Martin comes in in this amazing linen suit, which he immediately takes the jacket off of, and it's gorgeous, and he sits on it. So now he's now ironed that jacket into this big wrinkled mess that later he'll put on. But that guy is a very, very hard worker. Like, he was working that script every minute with Frank, like, you know, they said, let's do a, we'll do a one hour lunch break. And, and Steve, no, half hour, let's do a half hour. And let's, uh, Frank, let's go and we'll work. And he's got his laptop and it was in the early days of laptops. I was like, wow, you got a laptop or something special. Um, yeah, it must have been heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, and then Goldie Hawn was a riot and she was one of the producers. So, you know, at that point in my life, I'd always thought Goldie Hawn was you know, sort of flighty, but not at all, man. She was like producing this movie with, uh, with amazing people. They were all great. Um, there was a hurricane during the, um, the, the, the shooting of the, the film, which was shot on Cape Cod and they kept delaying and delaying and delaying my scene forever. And, uh, they basically cut it down to, I think one word, um, and I was on the set. Oh, and this is my other claim to fame around that movie, which is Goldie Hawn's daughter, who was a little kid. Uh, what's her? Is it Kate Hudson? Yeah, is that yeah. It? Kate Hudson. Yeah, yeah. Kate Hudson was a little girl, and she had a little bicycle, and it broke. And I'm a big bike person and was a bike mechanic, and I fixed her bicycle on the set. That's my claim to fame from that movie, but they delayed the shooting for so long. I still get really great residual checks from house that are, um, all awesome. <laughs> just plain trains and automobile, the truck driver. Yeah. Yeah. You just say, man, nice. Yeah. Let the storm ride out, brother. Let it ride out. Again. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, let man. the storm ride out. <laughs>